Hey there, today I wanted to talk about uh, something that can happen when you're trying to use an array modifier to animate a bunch of stuff along a path. Or actually, anytime you want to animate something on a curve. So the way this usually works, I'm describing the problem first, is um, you have an object like this cube that has been subdivided here, the yellow one, and you want it to animate along a path, uh, and the path has a 3D aspect to it. So in this case, we're gonna uh, move this ball up over this loop and back down. Um, so that's fine. Uh, what happens though, so if we turn on our array modifier, we've got our, so, so the general stack that you would use, um, actually, if we, if we don't do the, uh, in this case, like you can imagine like a train going over tracks and you want each car to go over the tracks. Um, so you usually have an array modifier to make uh, like 16 of your cubes here. So this is the modifier stack for our cube. Uh, probably let's call this ball. Um, and you want it to proceed along this path um, over time. And so uh, you add a curve modifier and you specify your curve here. Uh, and then when you go to move your object, uh, I'm going to grab it along the x-axis. Uh, actually, right now the curve modifier isn't active. It's just in the stack, so I'll activate it. And we can see that, yeah, our spheres will then move along the curve. That's fine. But one thing to notice, uh, we got some deformation happening. So if we could look at this from different angles, it might be easier or harder to see. Uh, these spheres are getting squelched. They're getting deformed as they move around this curve. So the approach we're going to take, I'm going to show you sort of how it looks over here. I'm going to probably have to move this lamp so we can see things. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> in this case, uh, we're not getting any of the deformation. So the, rate, the how that works is basically we've got a plane object and we're instancing on plane. So let's just, I'm going to walk through the whole solution now, uh, <clears throat> starting from, starting from nothing. So, <clears throat> um, right. We've got our ball and, uh, that's basically just a cube with a subdivision surface modifier on it. Um, we want it to move on this path. Okay. The way we do it is we actually inst instantiate small, um, planes. And we add the array modifier and the curve modifier to our our plane. So let's first add the plane. <clears throat> One thing it's uh, typically you want to have your plane start at your um, curve and or start or end point doesn't matter so much, but they should be they should share uh, an origin or the origin should be somewhere on the curve. Let's put it that way. Um, and the next thing you want to do is actually create a nice parent relationship of this. Well, let's go ahead and add the um, array modifier to our plane first. So we're gonna, we still have to do that. So we've got our plane and we're going to add an array modifier and give it some relative offset with some sort of spacing. It doesn't actually, we'll come back to this and tweak it later, but then we'll just do enough, uh, and then now we can go ahead and add a curve modifier here. And we can choose our NURBS path. And we're following, we're following that curve. Now, a couple things I would just want to point out right from the get-go. <clears throat> you may or may not want this banking behavior. So you can see, uh, you can see that this, this uh, two things. One, the face of our plane is, st is still getting deformed, but when we go to instantiate an object on top of this, it won't be deformed. Uh, but the other thing is there's also a tilt. So you may or may not want this tilt, this banking behavior. So let's just talk about that for a second because it is easy enough to fix. And select your curve and go into edit mode tab. And then you can look at the tilt value for some of these curves. And you could, uh, some of these points. So what I've done is I selected one of the uh, curve points and you can see under the item view here that that window shown high with N, uh, you can change the tilt uh, and you can just make it, them flat if you want. You can take uh, each one of these. Actually, 
Yeah, so you, you can adjust that to, as you would like the tilt of of the uh, points here. Um, yeah, you can set it to zero because it to whatever you want. I think in in our case, I'm just trying to make it flat for that curve. Doesn't really in our case, it's not going to matter. It's a sphere that you won't even be able to tell. But just so you know, you can individually adjust these these tilts. Uh, and um, yeah, okay, that was a digression. Sorry. Back here, we've got our planes. Now, now we need to instantiate our. Uh, oh, another thing you want to probably do. See, if I grab the curve now, and move it around, things get really weird. I think there's the offset positions of things, um, the relative positions of the curve and our our plane matter. Currently, <clears throat> it's because they're not parented. If you parent the curve, you take your your plane and then you sh you. Uh, I think shift select the curve. You can then do control P to parent to object. And now these things are going to share a coordinate system so you can move you can move the curve around. Okay, so that's basic setup. Now all we have to do is instantiate our um our sphere onto this uh plane here. So you go back to our plane in that line view. And you can select the object instancing. So in the properties panel, you select the object properties. There's an instancing area. And you can say instance on faces. Uh, and that'll work once we have, <laughs> then we have to actually parent our sphere to the plane now. Um, so this instancing, I'm going to. This instancing only works once you have a child. So I'm going to say none for now. I'm going to select the sphere, select the plane, and then command P to parent the sphere to the plane. So we start with the child and that, and those, those uh, command P, uh, control P parenting operations. Start, you select the child first, shift select the parent. All right, <clears throat> so now we can sort of see in the outline view, we've got a nerves path. Uh, that has a plane as a child, and then the plane has our ball as a child. And now for our plane, we can go to the object properties and select instancing on faces. All right, and once again, we have this offset because, um, yeah, because when we did the parenting, the the origin was not shared. The origin of the um, of the plane was offset from the origin of our sphere. So we can actually select our ball and grab it in the x-axis, put it right smack dab on the plane, and probably actually grab it from this angle too to make sure things are nice and clean. Now everything's okay, except we've got these ugly planes everywhere. I notice our spheres are not deforming. They're, they're clean. Um, so the only thing we need to do now is uh, hide the underlying plane. So that's fine. Um, so we go back to our plane. We look at the instancing tab, uh, object properties, instancing faces. Uh, we show the instancer, which is basically the the paint, the plane, both in the viewport and the render. Now you can turn it off in the viewport and the render, um, or you might decide, okay, it's fine the viewport. I just want to render it. And then when you go to render your scene, uh, there's your spheres without the underlying plane. So in summary. What you want to do is create a plane, parent it to a NURBS path, add an array modifier to it, uh, add a curve modifier to your plane, and then you want to parent your ball or your whatever your subject is into your plane, and then instance on faces. That's the main, those are all the tricks. Thanks.